and soon come in King, amen? Hallelujah. Tonight I welcome every person, everyone, for the service of As we will allow the Holy Spirit to teach us through the recreational knowledge, and that we will understand what He wants to say to us tonight. Amen? Praise okay. God. Well, let me pray first. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we come to learn more of you and your kingdom. We pray that God may give function to function. We bind every forces of darkness and principalities and powers. And we pray tonight that you will be glorified in everything mighty God. Send your anointing, your discernment, your faith, your anointing to teach to the power of the Holy Spirit. Open our eyes, our understanding to learn of you. Bless us tonight, mighty God, as we open up ourselves unto you, Lord. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Lead us, God, tonight as we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen, amen. amen church. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we're we'll looking tonight on the topic, scale fell from its eyes. Scale eyes, amen? Coming from the book of Acts chapter 9. We'll be reading from verse 17 to 9 to 18. It says, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting in his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, the Lord, even Jesus, that appear unto thee in the way, as thou camest, has sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Verse 18. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight. For which and arose and was baptized. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So we're looking at that verse. He said the scales and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. So what fell from his eyes is not exactly scales, but it looked like like scales. Amen? Amen. That is a description you could give. Praise the name of the Lord. See the word here? And he received sight for it and arose and was baptized. So when the scale fell from your eyes, then you will make a conscious decision and decide to follow Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So we know the story of Paul that he was one of them that persecuted the church very well. And God himself had to really confront him on the master's road. Amen? Knock him off the horse. And this is the, kind of the, the final part of his life where God put him in darkness for three days. Lose his sight. Amen? Amen? And then God revealed that there was a scale. Look like scale over his eyes. So we want to go into it for the Holy Spirit to break. The knowledge of scale fell from his eyes. Saw the apostle. Before he became a pastor, was Saul. Amen? Amen. So it gave me the understanding, the meaning, where we could understand. He says, scale from, fell from the eyes is actually, this is when a person has been blinded physically. The physical can be cataract. Cataract blinding? Mm. Cataract can cover your whole eyes. Blind, you can see nothing at all. You have to do surgery and it comes right back. So, this is when a person has been blinded physically and spiritually. But we're not looking on the physical one, we're looking at the spiritual. So, blinded spiritually and now can see clearly. They will see things differently when the scale fell from your eyes. You're going to see things differently and communicate with understanding to reason in a better manner. Because once upon a time, when the scale of your eyes, you can reason and communicate well. 
Then persons always at it and confront each other and always in a struggle to really share and communicate properly. So when the scale fell from your eyes spiritually, then you want to see what God called it to become and to be in the kingdom clearly. You want to reason with understanding and you will communicate good now. You don't know, talk in half and peace and quarter, but some things die when the scale fell from the eyes. Amen? Amen. So what can cause scale in the eyes spiritually? What caused so much scale, the scale in the eye of, of Saul, the apostle? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 So what can cause scale is when we walk in lack of knowledge because he was, he was all in lack of knowledge of Jesus Christ. He didn't know him. He knew the laws. He knew commonly doctrine. The religious doctrines. So that's what he knew. Amen, church? So now, all of those teachings and doctrines allow his eyes to be crowded and clogged and look at scales. And that's what he sees true. Praise the name of the Lord. So the lack of knowledge allowed to persecute the church. The lack of knowledge push him to do and to say things that is out of the will of God. Another one what can cause a scale to come on your eyes. Ah, religious teachings and spirits. So when the teaching come to us, we then take on the spirit to enforce us, reinforce us to manifest religiosity. Mm. The following church? Amen. So religious teachings of the laws and doctrines of men, it can allow scales to clog your eyes. So now you you speak about religious spirit and uh, knowledge and condemnation and, and some things that is out of the, the humbleness of Jesus Christ because you take on a spirit. So the spirit come reinforce your doctrinal teaching and use you to manifest scaly eyes operation here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So some person's manifestation is see out of scaly eyes. And they judge you wrongfully. Mm. Because probably Saul was saying, what is wrong with these people? Making a lot of noise. Going about transfer of trying touching and praying and all that for miracles. They need to shut down. They need to die. Praise the name of the Lord. So you voluntarily want to go to Damascus to persecute, to kill them all. Hallelujah. So it was a religious teaching that enforced him or influence him. You know, the spirit will influence him now to. To manifest the religious spirit. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Morning, church. Amen. So spiritually, he could not comprehend. He could not understand the things of God. He only could understand the religious things because he was limited. So his limitation could not allow his eyes to open like that. Mm. So that is what happened here. Religious teachings and spirits allow you to be blinded spiritually with the scales that you learn how. Amen? Another one which is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a giant. Unforgiveness is a strong man. When you walk with unforgiveness, it blinds you to even feel contacted. It blinds you in such a way that everything you see before you is bitterness and revenge. Hallelujah. So that's a big scale over your eye, which is unforgiveness. Praise the name of the Lord. And it feeds you every to continue maintaining this healing eyes. Yes. Jesus said. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We are the Holy Spirit tonight. Yes. So unforgiveness is what is a big scale that 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 blinds you to evil, to love, to share, yes. to help. He 
give it to Kiffy. Now, give him the moon. All the way to Jesus. Amen? Amen. We have another one that says, Bad influences and experiences cause you to be blinded. Because your experience that you have, you're going to go about and look for everything look like it. So you kill yourself, bury yourself with the one experience and influences that you got. And you will not allow the Holy Spirit to come in and bless you. Oh, hey. So every person, every other person that you will talk to, your experience will come up. Because it is your skin. It is your scale. So you talk about your scale rather than talk about, oh, I'm going to put my scale out and I'm going to talk about something new, something different. But every time you see you're talking about your scale. Uh, I'm a remember. I'm a know. I'm a feel. Praise the name of the Lord. So you don't have no other experience with the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. Once you experience from the past, you still living it in your present. Oh, Hallelujah, church. Amen. So be careful of your bad influences. Or your bad companies. Or experiences that you had before. Don't allow it to dictate to you now. The past is a past. The present is a present. I'm going to put it behind and move. It will not control me as a scale to see everything bad. And we'll experience everything bad. Because it's what you hold on to will continue walk with you as your journey in Jesus Christ. If you hold on to doubt, don't, don't go and carry it straight to your journey. If you hold on to fear, fear going to journey with you. If you hold on to suppression, suppression carry it to But if you decide to hold on uh, with fear, then every time the skill wants to come over, it has to lift up because fear don't go kill it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. You don't plan to hear this one tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. You've been giving me some topics that I've been writing through the power of the Holy Spirit to come into. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another one comes. Allow a big skill because I think that really just for the company this way that want to kill the Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. So when anything sets out to kill the Christ, it is competitive, religious behavior. Yes. So it is a big scale to see, hallelujah, that you alone must be in operation, you alone must be in charge, you alone must run in the front line, and nobody has can do it as you. So this spirit blinds you and challenges you. You sit in the chair, you feel like you're running against somebody. You walk in up the road, you feel you're running against somebody. So this can have you running mentally. So you become trained all the time. Why you're so tired? Competitiveness train you. Train you. Hallelujah. This can be inherited and then the other can be take on through relationship socializing. You don't want to fit in your rudiment, amen? Yes. church? So the competitiveness blinds you in such a way to be the, the leader. It push you to do things that is vain. Vain. Yes. Recognition. Yes. Acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. Yes. So this spirit yes. blind your eyes to see that somebody's soul need virtue. How can you run against a young, young convert that just come in and you in a church for years? Yes. Mm. You don't need to kill. No, 
We just come and give you a word. Touch it up. Hallelujah. So at the lion spirit, kill the royals. So we always coming at you. You see? You see too long, permanent. Everything you do and does, it offends. When it is not really an offense, it is competitiveness. Hallelujah. If you pray a problem, I'm talking about the ones that really wander by God. Working with the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. So you working with the wisdom of God, honored by the wisdom of God, but somebody still finding problem with you. It must be a spirit here. You understand me? When we pray, read, worship, worship for real and do I'm doing my thing sincere. Come on now. Me then with wisdom or to do it than cutting me down and kill me. Hallelujah. It is a competitive spirit that blinds a person high to see the thirsty soul that need water. That means cultivation, that means pruning, that means love, that means to smile. So your competitiveness shut them off and kill them. Holy Ghost. What can cause scales in the eyes spiritually? Stubbornness, disobedience, and rebellion. Three of them, one thing, work together. You have to be stubborn. Then you start to disobey. Eventually become rebellion. So that scares sit over your life to dictate. Sit in your eyes to see everything wrong. Means you really wrong. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Hallelujah. What are you making sense of me? So Paul the apostle been through so much to teach us now when he wrote unto us the church and said that any man in Christ must be a new preacher. He experienced scales of his hands. And he knew how it felt when it was there. And he knew how it felt when uh, it fell. Wow, yes. So he knew the difference. When it was there, I was in darkness, so I see everything dark. Yes. And now it came off, then I see everything clear. Yes. So I don't see you as my enemy, but I see you as my brother, but me help and strength. Wow. So I'm going to give you the word. Of strength and encouragement. Amen. Another one, generational inheritances such as soul ties, naiveness and procrastination. Holy well, Spirit right this stream because these are strong men that put skill over your eyes. Wrap your soul, man, and keep us in bondage. Amen. They allow you to have soul ties with naiveness, soul ties with procrastination, and generational inheritances, and allow you to walk with this big skill over your head. So that's what you see too as a man. So when we put on the glass, that's the big. This glass is generational inheritance first. When we put it on, you know, we see everything coming from a generation. So we become it. So, so, so when I see it, I'm going to go because the time here is so, so tired that time me to it to be naive. So I'm going to walk in it. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. But when it comes out, I'm going to begin to identify. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit said, look. No, this is 
to what happened when a person see through the scaly eyes, all of those things. We see through all of that before we, we got saved. And even now some still see through it because we fail to acknowledge it. So when we see through it, this is how they operate. They will pray for the persons with the same eyes. They'll counsel with the scaly eyes. You encourage, remember Paul was doing that you know? Yes. Brilliant man. With all the scales on his eyes. was brilliant. He encouraged. You read with it on your high. And you pour out as a man, mind, and personality. Meaning the Holy Spirit said. You pour out as a physical man, flowing from the mind, scale mind, yes. and your personality. And when you do that, it increase, multiply, gain grow, grows into trees of today, which is a person. Romans chapter 1 said that, so as Paul said, we impart gifts. So the enemy take on because he wants to be like Jesus Christ. So look, this is what the enemy do this year. He impart to multiply, he impart for you to grow and become men in this world. And you're full of scary hands as you grow. Because so God increase and multiply the kingdom of darkness. Increase and multiply because man choose sin rather than God. Yes. Amen. Amen. You follow the church? Amen. So if I don't get my deliverance when I came here serving God, I must not deliver us. My wounds have to heal. You know, heal same time, but I'm in the process of healing. So I begin to have strength over some, you know, weaknesses I used to have. I don't see things really just as before going slowly. Yes. Then when I pray, I won't transfer these things to the mind. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen, yes. church. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So I won't pour out what is in my mind, the mind, the personality to somebody else's life. And then grow with it and excited grow with it and become the man of tomorrow. We impact. The devil uses these things to impact life. Yes. Just as how he used a Peter to impact a, a set of people. Oh, the devil going to use a, a Judas to impact the society. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're understanding so far. The scale fell from your eyes. When we begin to get our deliverance. The scripture says that it fell from his eyes. But when it fell, he decided to get baptized and serve God. So when the scale fell from your eyes, you want to realize your present state yes. and make a decision. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So he got baptized and when he got baptized, the scripture continued and they want to kill him. Because he began to talk about this Jesus that he went down to Damascus school to kill out the people, Jesus people. How can you know talking about Jesus? They want to kill him. So they had to put him over a wall. Because they watched day and night for this man. Eh? So you go to Damascus to kill God people. Hallelujah. Amen, church. So be careful what you do with combat to hunt you. Yes. Mm. Amen? Amen. How to read the scales from the eyes? James chapter 1 says, Don't be just a hearer of the word, but you must be a doer of the word. Amen? Look into the mirror and you will see yourself. So to read these things, I have to see myself. So I must be willing to acknowledge that me have a religious skill. Me have a stubborn skill. Me have an experience and I need to hold me. I, I see through that lens all the time. Judge people and put them down all the time. Amen? The scripture says healthy eyes. 
submission. Amen. So to read the scales from the eyes, you have to submit. Stop fight. When God says submit, don't fight God. You must submit for the scale to move. God can't work on the, the clay unless the clay is willing to stay one place. You're not fighting him off and you're not resisting him. When he rub you, you don't rub him back. Amen. Amen. So you submit stuff for God and then he will work on you properly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Another one, how to read the scale from my hands. I must have the attitude to listen yeah. without criticism. Yeah. Some person listen to you and then I criticize you right here. Yeah. What do you mean I put a shepherd out? But eh? well, you have the same spirit. <laughs> They're not saying it out the whole thing of the most. But sometimes you catch the attitude. Some people try to hold the attitude when they talk. Oh, you can't talk to me. Oh, you fit me this, and you fit me this. So we listen. We have personality in us. We listen to some person. And God said, "I'm going to use the one where you know what talk to." Me. God going to use that person to talk to you because whenever this person talking to you, you are criticizing in your head. Look wow. your life, you're talking to God. Wow. Who you? Wow. I'm telling you the better than me. Wow. And they're telling you the right thing for you. Refuse to listen to the person because you have the criticism in your fight you not to cheat. But why you want me to go into the dirty river, John? Look how much river my pass. And it's clean. So you listen and criticize him. So how can Naaman be cleansed? When you decide to stop it, then you will be cleansed. You still will go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Confession sincerely. So when you confess sincerely and cry sincerely and not just emotionally because you have a motive and want to rise up and want a position. So we just perform to confess it. You've got to put your mouth where your heart is. So your heart must be saying what your mouth is saying. Oh Jesus. So when you do that, watch the skill fell from your hand. When you wake up in the morning, you say, oh God, my head feel light. I feel peaceful. I feel like I can run the race. I don't know what something is. What you need to understand, I hear the words we say. This body is an instrument to God. So look what the enemy does. He uses our bodies, our body, insane and contaminate every part that should be an instrument for God. The hands, the eyes, the ears. Knows everything he contaminates. So now, when you come to God, he has to be cleaning you up, cleaning your eyes, cleaning your ears that you can hear him. Yes. Clean your hands, clean your body, clean your heart that you can be a vessel and an instrument. So the enemy tries to contaminate us and that we don't work effectively. So if your ears don't cleanse, I always pray a consecration prayer. I say, God, Consecrate my hair, sanctify it with your word, blood, and fire, and let me hear only you clearly. Yeah. Can I pray that prayer? Hear it clear. Don't let me hear no other voice, your voice. Amen, church. So when you do that sincerely, then you're going to get your detox and your consecration because the enemy contaminates us. Even in the church, the enemy contaminates us. We a lot of impartation took place in the church and contaminated because you just come in, you have no knowledge of our church, but because the night you go to church is the safest place to be. Jesus said he's like a wolf, a sheep to the slaughter. You will be sent out of my wolves. Hello. I'm telling you, if you're a wolf, you can catch you up. Revealing Jesus. 
Jesus said, believe not every spiritual tribe. So you come in here with all your gifting up to your neck. I'm mean, not try you. How do I try you? So by the fruit of the spirit. So I'm gonna watch how you operate with your love, with your peace. Watch your feet. Look if you're standing here long suffering. So what if you meet this? I watch your meekness. I look at your approach. I look for your reason. And I saw a lot of four uh, weaknesses in reason. In Bridget. You believe that she beats in Bridget. You have to know the sheep. Jesus knew me. Humility and humbleness will allow the scale to rip from your eyes. That doesn't mean I don't talk a lot, so I'm humble. To me. You talk to me too much and I listen. Ooh, you're so humble. I want to step on your toe. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't know if you're humble. Hallelujah. Just say something to you that you don't like. Let me know if you're home. Amen. Receive the spirit of truth. It's not everybody receive the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. But why you tell so much that you receive the Holy Spirit as truth? Or why you're doing the things that is impression or things that
people have seen the visions as before. Because all the things of the past want to come into destruction. And addictions. And the reason you come see you have to take it down back. Amen. Amen. You have to ensure that you don't entertain these no more. Another one, set spiritual and emotional, mental and physical boundaries to stay strong. So I have to ensure that my boundaries are strong. That when I apply the word, the addiction will tear up the gate. Because your lifestyle defeats the enemy. Pray the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen, church? Amen. So I'm going to read the scales. When I begin to willing. How many people know willing to acknowledge you? Can I live much time? Is it all? No. Me? No. Let Bishop tell me, not you. Let Pastor tell me, not you. So we choose persons to tell us, tell us the things that to see for us to see. Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen church? Amen. Amen. So when the skill go from your eyes, you're going to see that I am not your enemy. You're going to see that I go on the generational curse. You're going to see that uh, if I, I can change and other persons around me can change. You're going to see things that you never used to see. You're going to understand things you could not understand. You're going to communicate with things you could not communicate. You're going to comprehend very well than before because the skill fell from the eyes. So it was a blockage spiritually for you to see. Blind Martin was a whole son of David. Hallelujah. Have mercy upon me. It was a blindness spiritually and physically. So it could not see. So he wants to see him. Hallelujah. And another scripture said, The day that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his trail filled the temple. So when the spirit fell, and something died of your life, you're going to see the cross. You will see the cross. You will hear the cross. I think when Philip said, What? Show me the fall.
Hallelujah. I hear Simon and the host will say, what is this man? Uh, what type of man is this? You don't know what type of woman touching you. Praise the name of the Lord. That was a religious fear. Uh, the woman with the alabaster box. Hallelujah. She was in pain. She was in hurt. She was rejected and abandoned. She was a prostitute. All she did was love. And all they could see is her power. But I hear Jesus say, I come inside here. You didn't offer me any water. You didn't offer me to wash my feet. But this woman, she washed my feet with her tears. And she tried her with her beer. And she gave up something that is so precious. Ah, oh, the Alabaster box. Hallelujah. She has been hearing me for a minute. What you do, just Some person has killed it, I said, 
can't tell me into your eyes too. They want to convict you that this is must this is all true. No. Look at you see that. They convict you to see their way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when your eyes look now, as they cleanse, what comes in? The discernment, the discerning eyes of Jesus Christ. So when the steady eye go, then your discernment, the discerning eyes will come. So you begin to see beyond the face. You deserve not the flesh and blood, but you deserve the spirit now. So we understand that hmm, this is how you feel at the moment. This is what is happening at the moment. So you deserve the things. Amen, church? Amen. God bless you tonight again.